A human rights group has expressed concern about a decision to delay returning Rohingya Muslims to Myanmar, saying it's a welcome move, but it's been done for the wrong reasons. Officials in Bangladesh have blamed the delay on logistics, but the organisation Fortify Rights says it's far too soon to send vulnerable people back. Many Rohingya have nowhere to live after a systematic effort to burn down Muslim villages by Myanmar's security forces and vigilantes. Southeast Asia correspondent Liam Cochran reports. Today was supposed to be the start of the Rohingya repatriation, returning some of the 680,000 people who fled across the border to escape violence in Myanmar. But with just hours to go, Bangladesh announced a delay. Abul Kalam is Bangladesh's Refugee Relief and Rehabilitation Commissioner, and he said this to print media. The list of people to be sent back is yet to be prepared. Their verification and setting up of transit camps is remaining. When it comes to repatriating hundreds of thousands of vulnerable people, knowing who's going and having a place to send them is certainly the bare minimum needed to start. Matthew Smith is with the investigation and advocacy group Fortify Rights. The authorities in Bangladesh right now are saying that it's been delayed essentially for logistical reasons, not for reasons of insecurity or human rights violations that are still ongoing in Rakhine State. When the repatriation plan was announced in November, a survey found 89% of Rohingyas didn't want to go back. This Rohingya woman says she'd rather die than return. (laughs) She says, you can throw us into the sea, but please don't send us back. We will not go back to Myanmar. Matthew Smith describes the prospects for those who do go back. Several hundred villages throughout northern Rakhine state have been burned to the ground over the last year. Um, So in those cases, people are going back to heaps of ashes or villages that have already been bulldozed. The bulldozers are also at work at the site of at least one transit camp in Myanmar. Officials there insist it's ready to accept the Rohingyas. But footage shot by local journalists on a government-arranged tour of the camp last Monday suggests otherwise. The footage shows a huge dusty field with a handful of surveyors and diggers. The few large white tents are labelled for the workers. There's no other accommodation in sight. No toilets, no drinking water, no health centre. There is simply a big, dusty field. Even if the camps are built, Matthew Smith from Fortify Rights says the apartheid system the Rohingyas fled remains in place. Uh, Restrictions on freedom of movement are the norm for Rohingya in Rakhine State, and we can expect that in these transit sites. The United Nations Refugee Agency is staying well away from this plan, stressing that Rohingyas should only go back to Myanmar voluntarily and only if their rights and basic safety can be protected. This is Liam Cochran reporting for The World Today.